And we're back with another episode of The Sound of Struggle. This is episode number Area 51. The hidden episode. Aliens and shit. Where we are planning on taking you on the best ride of your life. Until the next episode. As long as we can probe you. Yeah, anally. Yeah. Where you can say you have, oh my god. I'm also Chris Parrish. I'm the anal inducing maniac. Anal. <laughs> Lana. Speaking of Lana, she's not doing much right now. What is that? I don't know. This is an area of topic I thought I would start out for this episode. An area 51 of topic? Exactly. Ah, gotcha. But um, no reports are saying that the WWE have given up on Lana. What a shock. My thing is, just put her back with her fucking husband. You're not even doing anything with him either. Well, he's got a singer. Who? Aiden English. You can't look at his boobs. They have too much hair on them. And he works out. She... Well, I guess she does work out. She also got the cover of uh, Muscle and Fitness. Yeah, she did. She looked a little bit of all right. A little bit of scrumtralescent. Scrumptidlyumptious. Struggleicious, even. There you go. Let's just say, if I was a Ninja Turtle, my ooze would be flowing. You should get that checked out. Well, there's no secret there. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, it was like done it. My dandelion would be five feet tall. Michelangelo's letting his paint out to dry on this one. Ew. I say I kind of did two things. I like reference a turtle and then the painter. Yeah. 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 See what I did there? I saw several things you did there. Yeah. All of which are illegal in Vietnam. Yeah. Vietnam. Interesting. So, since our last podcast, which we aired before Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Yeah! Monday Night Raw actually ended up being a pretty solid episode. Yeah! We saw the return. Of Paige. Yeah! Yeah. With two of her friends. Yeah. Son, yeah! The Ville. And Mandy Rose. Yeah. Yeah! (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, don't be a... Hater? I was going to say Rosebud. But, I'd rather be a Yeah, that's, that's where I'm getting that. I, I will lick her lemon. <laughs> Whatever that means. As sour as it may be, yeah. we will lick away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, not to be undone, SmackDown's like, oh yeah? Well, watch this. We're going to do something totally different. And they bring up Ruby Riot. Yeah. Yeah. Flanked by... Sarah Logan. Yeah. And Liv Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty much the exact same thing they're doing on Raw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but we'll talk about the, the Raw f- uh, for a bit. Raw. But, uh, yeah, so it's very interesting that Paige not only... I think we knew she was going to come back eventually. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but the fact she comes back with two NXT uh, women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting that she obviously doesn't need to be paired with anybody. She's a big enough star on her own. Correct. Especially with her new action flick that was that came out in her absence. Sam is a little helper? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it was starring her and other WWE talent. Which movie is this? Um, uh, starring Xavier Woods, 
Uh, Brad Maddox. Ah, oh, Mad Braddox. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. yeah. The page turner. Yeah. <laughs> or the rampage. Yes. <laughs> Very good. However, we will turn the page. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But yeah, she was a big enough star where she can make a debut or a return, therefore. Where she didn't need anybody. But now that you bring in two NXT call-ups in Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, could only mean, you know, are you going to then have current Raw women team up and do some three-on-three six women matches moving forward, which we saw tonight when those three took on Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Mickey James. Did we? Yes, we did. Well, I haven't watched it yet. No. Okay. That's what I missed. Okay. We haven't watched it, but we're filming or recording, and oh. Raw has been over already. Oh. So that's what happened. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, just your thoughts on the new three-lady team on Raw. I have a theory about why they're being brought up for both sides. <sighs> Women's World Rumble. There's now enough if you bring back, say, the Bellas, maybe a couple like maybe Trish and Lita or whoever else you want to bring a couple more. You have enough for a 30 women bat- or thirty women Royal Rumble. Now, do you think they're going to, if they were to do this match, do you think they'll do 30 or would they do a safe 20? Probably more like a safe 20. That's, that's that's my thought. Um, I think a safe twenty might actually get you a better competitive one. Yeah, where thirty is kind of pushing it yeah. maybe a little bit. And that way they don't necessarily have to bring anybody back because their roster right now with these ladies coming up, I think it's at twenty three. I guess like they could always bring up the odd NXT call up. Just for yeah. a one-off? Yeah, like, say, bring up maybe an Ember Moon or uh, a Kairi Sane or uh, either one of the iconic duo, perhaps. I think they would be a good combination to that, just for the one-off. Yeah. Um, I guess you can always do, say, Rachel Ellering, who's been popping around. Yep. Uh, you can always do uh, an Aaliyah. Yep. I mean... Who uh, just celebrated her birthday? Also using the moniker "Cat's Meow," so uh, yeah, we can just say uh, the one in MPW. Yeah, you're ripping people off. Be original. You're ripping off a fellow Canadian who is doing way better than you, right? Get an original name, yeah, Jack offs. Speaking of which, Jack, Jack Swagger. Off? Oh, oh. Huh, I mean, just playing off the Jack thing. Uh, Jack Swagger, since he left WWE, is using the uh, You Don't Know Jack. So, Jack Pride, <laughs> <laughs> your shit was stolen by somebody bigger than you. Who would kick your ass? So, basically, what we're saying is. In more ways than one now, because he signed with Bellator. Quit being a jack off, Jack Pride. Yeah. Quit being a jack off, uh, Kitty Cat Clan. And uh, furthermore, keep being awesome, Tag Circle 3. Yeah! Struggleish that, yeah. Biatch. Um, but yeah, so this third or this idea of a woman's Royal Rumble seems to be more of an actual thing now. Seems to be coming to fruition. There's been a lot of rumors and reports saying that this is actually going to happen. I also heard through the grapevine. Heard it through the grapevine. Fine. Well, I mean, not really through. I mean, there was announced that Money in the Bank now for 2018 is also a dual brand pay-per-view. Oh, so it's not just the one time a year at Survivor Series. They're lying to us. Card subject to change. Well, they just announced this after at Survivor Series. Card subject to change. Not really. It will, it can, and it must. So, but what I found interesting is that... If Money in the Bank is a dual show, will they do Money in the Banks in the form of you do one for the men, one for the ladies, where both brands are involved? Or are you doing 
one for each brand, which would be a lot of ladder matches. Because that's already four then, opposed to if you do one for the men, say do eight men, four at each side. I think a duel, like one where it's like both Raw and SmackDown in the same match, it'd make it more competitive because not only could then SmackDown or Raw win, but in theory, say we go down a little rabbit hole here and have, oh look, SmackDown guy won. And someone will pick whoever decides to finally beat Brock Lesnar. And then, oh look, guy from SmackDown, boom, grabs it, goes back to SmackDown with the title. There is another layer well, to the story. What happens if SmackDown guy wins, that's his excuse to move to Monday Night Raw. Vice versa. There could be, yes. Say, like, Bobby Roode wins, decides to go over to Raw. Or, say, Finn Balor wins, decides to go over to SmackDown. Yes. Vice versa with the women. Um, which also brought me to a theory that I could have now. Um, the next Money in the Bank is slated after WrestleMania. Correct. I think it should go back to being at WrestleMania, but that's just me. What about it? Yep. Yeah. But also, what happens with the Raw first <laughs> right after WrestleMania? A lot of things. They get shooken up, right? And they do that. They draft. get woke. They get, as the kids say, lit. Now, if Carmella doesn't cash in... She would be the first. No, think about this. If No, if she doesn't cash in until the roster has been shaken up, she gets then drafted to Raw, still with the money in the bank. She could use that to then come either back to SmackDown, or maybe she can use that to then become Raw Women's Champion. Yeah? Yeah, she could. That would be actually, that would be different. I like that. That means she should hold it for almost a full year, yep. which hasn't been done pretty much since Edge, who was the first one. And I think Seth Rollins held it pretty close, too. He, he held yeah, it for a he, while. He held until Mania, anyways. Um... Also, another thing about this Money in the Bank match, would you do a tag team Money in the Bank? Why not? Works for TLC for tag teams. Where they, you've seen that before. Well, you did it in the Elimination Chamber. Like, you had an Elimination Chamber for tag teams. Yeah. I definitely I definitely think you could. Um, and if that's the case, it would add a very cool dynamic, because now you have potentially 16 people in one match. That's a lot of if people. If you do four teams? That's a lot of people. So, so yeah. It's carnage. Good. Yeah. That'd be good. But speaking of carnage, we'll go back to that raw women's uh, uh, group. Because they were not out. They were outdone the very next day, as we saw the three lady group debut. There was no return. It was just. Ruby Riot debuting on SmackDown. Ooh. She's terrifying with that super white skin and that super dark makeup. And she looks like the if you correct Tom Tucker's kid's face, it kind of looks like Ruby Riot if you had some makeup. <laughs> right? Yeah. But so she leads the charge of having Sarah Logan. Liv Morgan should run that group. She is hot. Yeah, but, okay, but here's also the thing, because I'm not going to disagree with you there. Just like I'm not going to disagree with uh, Manny Rose might be the most attractive one out of that one. Hi. However, also, by the way, Paige with the whole lipstick, not the look she should be going for. It's better than having, like, the black lipstick and silver, whatever she used to use. Mm. Just go with no lipstick. Uh, all I'm saying is that she looks better and she looks healthier now than that super skinny whatever she's going for it before she left. Or got hurt. Well, I mean, maybe she uh, ate a little Mexican before she uh, and then came to... And shat it out and got <laughs> healthy. Yeah. Uh, it was her... She's not a fan of churros. <laughs> it was her destiny. Yeah. Uh, Chimichangas aren't right. <laughs> but, uh... Ruby Riot might actually be the best talker. That's why she's probably the the captain of that group. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like I think Paige is the best talker out of the three. Yeah. And it's easier for the other two to get. I mean, let's face it. Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. As much as Liv Morgan was used longer and more often sometimes than Ruby Riot, Ruby Riot was always a bigger star in yes. NXT. And so you're taking the bigger star and putting them in charge. 
in the spotlight. Um, at least on SmackDown, when I, we saw that one, they had targeted Naomi, who was getting her makeup done. And Becky. But then Becky actually came to help. And then got beaten up. Got her f- chest slammed in the door. Yeah, she also got a table thrown on her that looked very awkward. Yeah. Yeah, it really did. But, I mean, uh, what I was a little bit more impressed with is that it seemed like there was more of a we got your back kind of mentality on SmackDown than there was on Raw, because on Raw we saw the three women in the ring, Becky, or sorry, not Becky, Bailey, Sasha, and and, uh, Mickey James. They just got destroyed. Dead. But then they beat up Alexa Bliss, which many are people are thinking, is this now a face turn for Alexa Bliss? Could be. Definitely could be. You could have all of them get grouped together to try and uh, go after this new trio. But, like, it, it just, I don't know, it's very interesting. Like, do you go with this new group of being your top three heels for your Raw Women's side? Because my question is, what happens in the shuffle to Anaya Jax? She destroys everyone. Because would you not say She that? contends for the Intercontinental Champion and wins. <laughs> Ooh, uh. Right? Um, but yeah, now it seems like Raw has a lot of women. Yep. You have the three uh, of Paige, Sonya... And Maddie Rose. Yeah, the shield. Yeah. <laughs> but then you also have the three that they targeted was Sasha, um, Mickey, and Bailey. Yeah. Then you have Nia. Yeah. You have Alexa. Yeah. And then you have Asuka. Asuka. So there's nine women right there. And we're not even talking about Alicia, which makes it Fox. Ten. Ten. Oh, actually, there's 11 if you count Dana Brooke, who got destroyed again tonight, apparently. Yeah. Destroyed I'm, again. I'm just assuming now she's going to get released, just like Emma did after they she They won't release her right away. Her fiancé died not too long ago. Well, She'll be there for at least a year. And she has huge boobs. Well, if that was the case, she'd be there forever. She might be. Then, I'd now, be okay with that. forever. I'd be okay with that. Uh, <laughs> would you? Yeah, she's good to look at. Not good to listen to, though. Not a big fan of her voice. I'd just mute. Mute button for a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Um, so we, we kind of mentioned it. Roman Reigns had a big night. Became the new intercontinental champion. And the second man within the shield to become a Grand Slam champion. Who would have thought several years ago that Seth Rollins would be the only one not being a Grand Slam champion? No. Here's my thing. Is he not a Grand Slam, or was he the first different Grand Slam? Because he was the only one that was NXT champion. Okay. So I, you, I, guess, I, guess, I guess there is that point of view, but by traditional Grand Slam point of view, he's not. Yeah, but by, by, but but by traditional, the, the U.S. title wasn't there. That's true. It was always European instead. Okay, sorry, the New Age tradition. So, um... But, I mean, he also has Money in the Bank, which Dean Ambrose has as well, but he yeah. also has... Uh, really, Dean Ambrose is the most accomplished one. Really is. Really um, is. But then again, you look at Roman Reigns, and he has a Royal Rumble win. Doesn't he have two? Or is it just one? No, just one. Because okay. he won, and he got booed, and then he lost the one in the finals. Right, I thought he almost Not won. in the finals, sorry. He uh, got eliminated by Triple H, who then eliminated Dean Ambrose. Right. That's where he... Defended the WWE title. Right. Um, and then Randy Orton won last, or this year. Okay, yeah. I'm back on track. Yeah. Back on track. Which means that most likely next year will be probably Brock Lesnar, because he hasn't won one since well, 2003. That, but the, that that here here's also where I was going to go now, because the Royal Rumble is about a month and a half, maybe two months away now? About two months, yep. Yeah. So... Where are you planning on going now? Because we look at um, each side. Brock Lesnar's the Universal Champion. Yeah. Uh, Roman Reigns is the Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. You have a pay per view before that. Yeah. Wait, which was before that? Because isn't Clash of Champions the uh, SmackDown one? 
It's. I don't know. I can't tell. I can't remember which show was actually promoting it. Mm-hmm. They kind of both promoted it. I can't remember. No, I believe Clash of Champions is. Uh, is might, Raw? No, it might be SmackDown. Might. So then, does Raw have like Roadblock on like, the end of the year? Like no, Raw. Ro- I don't know. Wasn't Roadblock always in uh, February? No, the first one was the end of the year. It was like mid December. I thought the first one was between. Or was it the beginning of January? I thought it was, be- yeah, like, yeah, in January, but between Rumble and Mania. That might be, I don't know. Because the first roadblock was Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan, yeah. or Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan, was it not? Yes. And then the last one we saw Dean Ambrose against Triple H. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. So. Yeah. Point is, <laughs> The Miz and Becky Lynch are going to star in the Marine Six. That's the point of all this. And Shawn Michaels. And Shawn H.B. Mother K. Michaels. Who had a very impressive ab off with Jordy Gargano. Yes. Jordy Gargano took that seriously. Yes. Because he has more six packs than we could ever chug down at first round. Challenge accepted. I'm going to need a ride. Uber. Uber. Yeah. But no, let's get back into that Royal Rumble. Because I think this is a very interesting um, pay-per-view right now. Because if you want Roman Reigns to challenge Brock Lesnar, A, do you want champion versus champion? Two, this is, I think, a match where Roman Reigns doesn't need to win the Royal Rumble. About time. But that looks very good because now you kind of can put, say, a scenario where if AJ is your champion going into Mania, Shinsuke Nakamura might actually be a. Ha! Good... Ah, whoa! Hold on! You're going to have the Japanese phenom who hasn't done dick all suddenly win something? Seems, oh. seems logical. Yeah, about time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> speaking, speaking of Japanese phenom. We have something to talk about after this, about a Japanese star. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not going to choose uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, who wins the Rumble? Well, here's the thing. Does Raw need anybody on their side to win the Rumble? If your main event is going to be Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, it should go to SmackDown, should it not? You'd think so, yes. Now, hypothetically, would a Kevin Owens be worthy of it. I would only go that route if you weren't already planting the seeds of having Owens and Zayn going to Raw, or wanting to go to Raw. Well, maybe that's the thing, though. Maybe he does that, goes to Raw, and inserts himself into that main event match. I could possibly see a match where they're in a match where if they lose, they lose their spots on SmackDown. But, I mean, with SmackDown being played, they really showed how... uh, the whole roster was against them to where they ended off kind of wanting to, at least Kevin Owens, that is, beg to have the spot back. Yeah, I agree. So, it'd be very interesting to see where that goes because, as we said last week, they're the ones who interfered and tried to help Raw win the Survivor Series match. I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say they're trying to help Raw win. It's more of they're just attacking... Uh, Shane McMahon. Well, one kind of goes with the other, does it not? Uh, it wasn't like they were going with intent to help, more like they were just doing it for, for their own... If you're going out there and trying to beat up a member of a team... Yeah, but it's not necessarily like you're purposely... You're kind of hoping to weaken him out so he doesn't win. Yeah. Well, you just want to hurt him. You don't really care if he wins or loses, you just want to hurt him. But if you hurt him, you're weakening his chances of winning, aren't you not? I guess, yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying not, they're not going out there necessarily trying to help Raw. It's more of this. That happens to be an extra... They're going out... They, they are going out there with the intent to screw over Shane McMahon. Yeah. But with that intent allows Raw to have a better advantage of winning. Yes, which which happened. Yeah. Thanks to Braun Strowman. Only Braun Strowman because Triple oh. H. Butch! I mean, we don't have to talk about that main event any more than we did last week because... Nope. 
Uh, speaking of Braun Strowman, he uh, was attacked by Kane at the end of last week on Raw. Con. To where he got the chair in the throat. Right in the kisser. Thought he did a very good job of selling that whole thing. Right in the pisser. And uh, kind of, uh, I just liked how Braun Strowman actually took that time to actually make it look like that there was a capability of getting one up on him in a physical way. Yeah. Um, because as much as he is looked as a dominant force, he really put himself in that area of sympathy a little bit. Yeah, I can see him being a top baby face real quick. Well, I mean, I, I would look at Raw, like the night after Raw, like wouldn't... Maybe Mania? So, Raw? so yeah, the Raw after Mania. Would Mania. it not make sense Mania. that the Mania. WWE goes with Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman as their top two baby faces on Monday Night Raw? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't... Like, I would then probably do, you know, maybe Braun versus Joe. That'd be interesting. I'd, I'd be After sure. that. And then maybe Roman versus... Goldberg. Actually, you know what? I, you know, a feud I would love to see for the world title then if Roman was to take it off Brock is Roman against The Miz. That'd be alright. I think the, and then you could have a secondary feud and then if hype at the... Hi- Hypothetically. Yes. Thank you. Beer. If... No, that was just me not oh, remembering gotcha. how to pronounce it. Hypothetically. There you go. If the rumors are true and Dean Ambrose is the one to split from the S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion, you then can go back to Dean and Seth, with Dean being the heel. I like it. And then, I don't, but then again, I'm talking ways away. What we did see on Monday Night Raw tonight, though, Bray Wyatt beat up Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy looked like he might have been broken or deleted. Well, he did do a lot of deletes after. While well, he was sitting in the corner selling, just doing a lot of his deletes. The leg. Now, it was rumored that by the end of the year, he will own the trademarked a broken Matt Hardy. About God damn time. Now, and the nice thing would be is that then that way Jeff Hardy can come back as Brother Nero. I mean, his shoulder was broken. Just like his face. Yeah. But here's the thing, too. What are the chances and likelihood that we see broken Matt Hardy in WWE? I'd say 50%. That's such a cop-out answer. Okay. 57%. That's better. Okay. I'm going to say it's honestly as much of a cop-out as it is, it's going to come down to either Vince sees it and wants it, or he sees it and doesn't like it. Well, and that and that's why I said it. It's not his creation. We've seen in the past that if it's not his, he's not truly willing to do it. 34%. I mean... Also, look at War Games as prime example. He doesn't do it on the main roster. Triple H does it on NXT, though. Yeah. Comes out to a huge success. Thanks to Velveteen Dream and Alistair Black. Well, no. They weren't. No. The, the six guys in the match. Or, sorry, nine guys in the match are the reason why it was a success. Yeah, those two, I guess. I mean, the actual match, not the pay per view. Yeah, those guys, too. Yeah. Velveteen Dream, put the win. Ooh, no, uh. He lost. Yeah, ooh. Uh. <laughs> yeah. It's not even an ooh. Uh. Roman Reigns <laughs> is not there. Yeah. <laughs> Neither is Lana. Say my name. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but now that you see that it works in the WWE banner, sold out, it's going to come back. I want Bash on the Beach, brother. Brother, brother. Or Halloween Havoc? That one I can that one should be a thing. Should make it a thing. Even if it's like a Halloween edition of you know, like Raw or SmackDown. We did we did say about three months ago which ones we would like to have come back. Oh, I don't know, war games. And then boom, back. So Back to the Beach and Halloween Havoc. Maybe there'll be NXTs. Maybe Slambury. Slambambury. 
Which is the big one do they usually have? Uh, Starcade, which just happened. That's our segue. We planned that. We didn't just wing that one at all. Uh, right out of our ass. So they did a live event in Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, promoted it as Starcade. And you know who was there? Clap, clap, woo! Charlotte. Oh, I was gonna say Aaron Anderson. Him too. Rick Flair. That guy. And uh Tully Blanchard. No. Did you know that? No, but the Rock and Roll Express were. Side note, I posted this a while ago. I took a skid steer course about a couple weeks ago, and the guy in the course that was uh, doing it with me looked just like Ricky Morton. Like, I mean, <laughs> identical. Maybe it was the same guy. And you missed your shot of getting noticed. Well... I made a comment about him looking like Ricky Morton, and his response is, who? So. You got big lead, man. You got big lead. Well, if that's the case, the Rock and Roll Express. Come right in their ears. And no, I won't play the game where I close my eyes and put my finger out. That shit. Please? No. Pretty please? No! I'm not going to stick my finger in their ass. At least not when they're wanting it. But all the cool kids are doing it. Well, I'm not cool then. I'm Tank Circle 3. I'm better than that. What happens if Martins and I do it? Then you guys are f***ing selling. <laughs> <laughs> and you're also fondling older men. You also, you also didn't say no there, so... You're still a f***ing sellout. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I was just a fist instead. Uh, fist the butthole. We'll take it. Wait, I'm not doing it to you, you I didn't say that. Okay, very good. Starkey! <laughs> yeah. So uh, we saw two cage matches. Well, we didn't see it. We were told about it. I tried to I watch saw it. pictures. Okay. Well, I tried to uh, record I it. It turns out wasn't a thing to actually record. I thought it'd be like the first roadblock where it was just a live event mm. that turns out to be actually something. Roadblock but wasn't a, just a live event. It was a network special. But I thought it would be a network special. That's what I'm saying. Well, it's yeah. Not to be. Um, you think Starcade would be a network special, but no! I think it was more or less... Stop it. <laughs> uh, I think it was a thing of they wanted to get the show over more as a live event in North Carolina. Maybe they'll end up coming out on DVD or something. Very well. Or maybe they'll put it on the network. That would be alright. Um... But now there's talks where they might do it annually. Like in North Carolina? No, like having Starcade as a thing every year now. You should. They already got rid of uh, Great Balls of Fire. Thank God. Which is good because nobody needs gonorrhea. Nobody needs the gonorrhea pay-per-view. The only good thing about that pay-per-view was the gonorrhea. videos that they did. Because they oh. had that old school drive through kind of feel. I used to work at a drive through It's a good time. Yeah. Um, not the point. Just throw it out there. Throw it out there. Um, but yeah, that was really... Actually, the show really wasn't that bad. It was just... It, it was a stupid show name. Yep. Um, they got rid of a few, I think. Uh, what was it? Bad Blood also was taken out or something. Was that this year? I don't know. It might have been a while back, but a couple a couple were taken out. No Mercy? I want to say maybe Fastlane was also taken out. That's okay, because that one's basically it started, like, was it 2011? I actually like Roadblock better than Fastlane. Yeah. If you put Roadblock right before Mania, as in that's the Roadblock to get to See, Mania. See, and that's what I was thinking before. Actually, I'm going to correct myself. Uh, I wasn't thinking Roadblock, because Roadblock was one of the last ones of the year. Fastlane was the one that was before Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. That's where we had Daniel Bryan against Roman Reigns. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. That's, uh, that was my bad. That is that. That was my bad. But if Starcade was an annual thing, would you just keep it in North Carolina or would you move it around? I do the first few in North Carolina, get it over. I mean, because I think that's becoming. Well, actually, I lied. Not necessarily. I do the first few in North Carolina and surrounding states that uh, the WCW and NWA really hit home with. I would do one in Texas. 
Texas had the gathering as well. They had that yeah, southern okay, state. Yeah, yeah. Um, but kind of do it in that area, get it over, and then start branching it out. Now, from what you read of Starcade, was there anything that you actually enjoyed or enjoyed at least reading? Absolutely. And as soon as I read it, I'll let you know. I haven't heard a damn thing about it. Okay, so I'm going to fill you in. I would love to be filled in. Fill me in. All right, so Dash Wilder yes. faced a returning... Dawson? No. Oh. Uh, well, Dustin Rose came out as a Goldust theme with the Goldust rope. When he came out, did his signature Goldust pose. Then he discarded the robe... All of a sudden, he had red pants on, a black top on, and became the natural Dustin Rhodes. Went old school. I like the, it. The same uh, moniker he used when he first debuted WCW with his dad. Yes. So it was very much a throwback to honor his father. I already like it. Which it's a great touch, and I I think of all guys too. Dash Wilder might be. They're very southern, like four horsemen esque. They're very old school too yeah. on their psychology and the way they look. Uh, just they look the way they work, the way they portray themselves, just the way they think the business. They're yeah. very old school. Yes. Um. So I kind of like that match. I kind of wish I saw that match. It would be nice. WWE Network, put it on. Um. You also saw. The first match of the night was Dolph Ziggler against Bobby Roode, where you had a special enforcer, Arn Anderson. Interesting. And then if you uh, have seen anything online, you would have saw that Dolph Ziggler at one point tried to bring in a chair. Arn Anderson got in his way. Dolph Ziggler clocked him with a punch. As soon as he got into the ring, Arn Anderson got up, got in the ring. Dolph Ziggler turned around. Big spine buster by Arn Anderson. Woo! To a big pop. The referee is like, yeah, whatever. Well, only to a, it. And only do a glorious DDT for Bobby Roode, who won the match. The Manag driver that yeah. I used to use. I still do sometimes. I like it. But now it's glorious. It's Manai's glorious driver. MGD? Yeah, it is. There you go. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Anyways, what else happened? That was a wedding beer. Um, yes, it was. A good beer. Uh, yeah, golden. Yes. Um, but yeah, then we also saw Charlotte in a cage against Natalia. And raunchy Ric Flair was there. And uh, yeah, he was. So we saw that obviously for the women's title. Charlotte were retaining. Um, okay. Then we saw AJ Styles defeating Jinder Mahal in a cage as well. Of course. And then we saw Baron Corbin defeating Baron Corbin in a cage. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. Baron Corbin versus the cage. No. <laughs> Who did he face? He faced, uh, I believe it was uh, Shinsuke for the U.S. title. Entertained. By disqualification. In a cage? No. Oh, okay. Nothing well, with a cage in that. You don't put a lone wolf in a Jap in a cage. You just don't do that. Sounds like a big of a joke. Or a bad, bad movie. Yeah. Due date. <laughs> right? Um, so... But yeah, no, it seemed like it was a good card. Enjoyable show. Good reviews from what I saw. Be nice to be able to actually see it. Yeah, so I'm hoping, really hoping that that actually comes out either on the network. I mean, obviously, if they make it a DVD, it'll be on the network. Yeah. I mean, one kind of goes with the other. Oh, yeah. um, but if you can not get it, well, then what we'll do right now is tell you what you can get. If you go to whatamaneuver.net, you can get yourself some merchandise of... The early days of Tag Struggle 3, when we were known as just the Struggle. And you can get original Struggle merchandise, whether it's t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, baby onesies. Yeah. And if, by chance, you're like, ooh, I very much like these. You know what they can do, my Nike? 
they could get something even more vintage. Right, they could go back and they can enjoy the yesteryear days. If they could turn back time. Don't think it's the same song. They could buy our old merch. That they can do. Yeah. And they can get the old school Warren World Empire gear. Vintage. Which was a very hot commodity while the Warren World Empire was a thing. And you never know. Yeah, Bulldog still has my white one, the bastard. Yeah, you actually wore mine in the last match and ripped it off, that fat man. Son of a bitch. I wouldn't call him fat because, you know, his pecs look like pecs. His pecs ate other people's pecs. Yeah, and then... The Peckinator. The Pecker. Peckman. 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 Uh, but, uh, he was a doggy that doo-dooed all over my shirt. Douche dog. I went, doo-dooed. Yeah, uh, bad doggo. Yeah, so uh, go to whatamaneuver.net. Go get our uh, merchandise. We thank you. Uh, if, by chance, you're like, you know what? I want something more, I don't know current and fantastic then you can come down to <laughs> yeah, any yeah. monster pro wrestling show which i don't know maybe this saturday December second this saturday december 2nd it's creek three where three is the lucky number tag struggle three let's creek three you're in a three-way fuck yeah you and sean martins have uh a day with destiny Let's just say that the Tag Struggle 3 has a 33.3 percent chance of winning Blitzkrieg 3. True story. So. And my third appearance. No. And, uh, also, what you can do is you can go and buy the very, very, very popular Tag Struggle 3 t-shirt where that Beautiful design was definitely an original design, handcrafted by yours truly, Tag Struggle 3 themselves. Yeah, use use all you. I'm even just saying, we may have gotten a couple bit of inspirations along the way, but what you see is what you get. inspired by those that you respect. Inspire 3. Inspire 3. So. Inspire 3D. We should do the 3D. Right? Or maybe the 33D? Is that off the top rope? I don't know. That'd be sweet. It's whatever we want it to be. Three. Brother. It's whatever we want it to three. Um, anyways, maybe, yes, $25. Maybe we should do brother shirts, but the E and brother is the three. Brother three? Just three brothers? I mean, there's yeah. a... Yeah! Makes sense. Right? I so, like it. Uh, I like it. We have t-shirts. Go buy them. I'm wearing one right now. It's... No, 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 I was, I was nice. wearing mine earlier. Yes, you. A little were. bit of all right. A little bit of all right. All right, it's a hot sauce of excellence, people. Buy them. I believe they're only what twenty-five, unless you're a big fat <laughs> like myself or bigger. And, he, and you know what? To go stay with the three thing. You know what? Five minus two is three. There you go. Common denominator. Three people. Yes, there are three people. No. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so do that. Um, Anything else? You know? Well, you know what? I, I, I do have one. Okay. Hashtag Backrick at Radio. Uh, Tommy apparently is joining 205 Live. Deo at Tommy joining 205 Live. Yeah, apparently it's a thing. Yeah. No, the vignettes have been uh, shown. I think it's a good move. I agree. Um, I think he was getting a little stale in NXT. Yeah, he wasn't being used to his full potential for sure. Um, I just think he kept getting lost in the shuffle. Yep. Um, so it'll be very interesting. 205 Live always seems to be, you know, who's going to challenge Enzo next. Hideo will do a good job. Uh, Kaliso's already coming gone. Yep, been there, done that. Um, kind of curious to see what they're going to do with Kaliso moving forward. I was... Definitely like him to kind of use his status to help elevate maybe a grand mental eek a little bit. Yeah, that'd be all right. Um, so, uh, Hideo Tommy and Enzo could, you know, it'll be very much interesting. I'm also very interested to see if they were, if the UK guys are 
just because that they were in Britain in the UK or if you're going to see more of those guys on 205 Live. Well, if uh, WWE listens to this podcast like I know they do, Vince, Triple H, log into you boys. They're probably going to start doing an invasion angle of NXT. But at the same time, um, I listen on to another podcast and say, what you do with the NXT title, instead of having Andrade Cien Almas, um, you're assuming that you know he was going to feud with Drew McIntyre for a bit. I mean, I think it's likely that the next takeover involves him and Aleister Black for the title. Okay. However, if you don't want that, maybe you bring in a P- Palpatine Dream. Pete Dunn. Title over title? But Pete Dunn challenges Cian Almas for the NXT title. I like it. I don't think it would be too bad because then maybe you can do Alice for Black. Velveteen Dream. In like a number one contenders match. Or Velveteen Dream. Maybe. Yeah. I think Velveteen Dream definitely helped his status and helped his stock. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, I think we all know that Alistair Black is... The man. He's primed to be the guy in NXT. Yo. And uh, reports are saying that uh, Drew McIntyre might be ready to go by WrestleMania. Perfect. Surprise entrant in the Royal Rumble. Yep. Uh, it's months after the Royal Rumble. He's out for the Rumble. Well, that kills that plan. <laughs> um, surprise entrant and SummerSlam. Well, maybe he's, uh, maybe he might make a return on the NXT before WrestleMania. Surprise entrant and uh, the Money in the Bank wins it. Maybe he's just a surprise entrant for some time down the road. Surprise entrant and Blitzkrieg 3. Blitzkrieg 4? Maybe he gets released and Blitz becomes Creek, a star on the Indies again. Blitz Creek 4, he'll become knocking on our door. Right. Yeah. He'll be Drew 3. He'll be Droopy? I don't know. Ew. Sounds like, Ew. A, sounds like a dwarf. Sounds like a fucking condition of the cock. So dwarf. Drew P. Wiener. <laughs> uh, Drew P. or not Drew P. That is the question. Don't do not do it. Just, <laughs> yeah, don't. Just, just don't. Okay. I have a couple things here I want to throw by you, see what you think. There's a trade rumor going around the old NH of L. Do it. Hmm. Rumor is, Carey Price for Cam Talbot. Oh, yeah. And Nuge. No, that's not... Patrick That's not going to happen. I didn't think so either, but I wanted to get, you know, you as a fan of the team, I wanted to get your perspective. No, uh, Montreal would be dumb as fuck to do that. Dumb as fuck. Um, in all honesty, too, right now, Matt Patriotti is a free agent. Right now or at the end of the year? At the end of the year. Oh, it's not right now. You're trading two guys from Edmonton's point who have contracts next season. Yeah. For one contract and a free agent. Yeah. I mean, I just... Plus, Nugent Hopkins is actually playing pretty well right now. Yeah, I think he has definitely played himself into a position where his job is now secure. Yeah. I honestly believe that asking Milan Lucic to waive his no-trade clause is a more valid option than getting rid of Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Do you think he actually does it, though? I don't know. It all depends on if they can turn their games around and start playing a little bit better. I mean, I I think, too, one of the big things is you get Andre Sekera back within the next couple weeks, and we'll see if their defense is going to help out. Yeah, and right now, apparently there is a flu bug going around. Yeah, apparently McDavid's been playing the whole time well, having the flu. Kudos to him. Losing 10 pounds. 10 and still I had a bug like that once where I lost 10 pounds in about 72 hours. I could barely move. I have no idea how he's still playing a game. At That's his insane. pace. insane. At his pace. Yeah. Um, I'm not throwing this as an excuse, but it just seems that their consistency level is off this year. Yeah, uh, what more the, like spoiled milk. Well, I mean, they have one bad game, they have one good game, they have another bad game, they got to put 
a couple good games together and get their mojo back. Last year, when we saw them playing, they were playing good games across the board. They were hard. Consistently. Yeah, and they're just not doing that right now. Yeah. You know who else is not doing that? I mean, they have the talent because we saw it last year, but at the same time, there's still moves to be made. That trade offer, not one of them. No, mind. not at all. I would not even make it for both teams. I don't think... Carey Price helps the Oilers as much as people thinks, and I don't think getting rid of well, Carey Price is a good thing for Montreal anyway. I was going to say, you see, you've seen how much they struggled this year without him. He's just starting to get back into form. Well, the funny thing is Montreal's actually playing better hockey with him being hurt. That too. They don't have to rely on him as much. They're like, oh, he's back there, it's fine. No, and they don't And they don't even have Shea Weber right now. What's he doing? He's hurt. It. What did he do? I don't know right now. That, that, I don't. I don't know. Thought that my head. big butch. Uh, speaking of hurt, you see what Landeskog did? Yes, yeah, spent four games. Son of a bitch! That was four games today. Dirty. Yeah, it was against Calgary. I'm okay with it. it was against Kachuk, yes, but still dirty. You know, it's also dirty against Calgary. Who is uh, Toronto Argonauts comeback in the 105 Grey Cup last night? Yeah, let's skip that. We'll go back to hockey in a bit. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the Argos came back after getting a pick six. That was fun to watch. That was actually a really intense. Calgary blew intense. it. They had it. Where was that blow a week ago? They were saving it. Don't you know? It was against our Eskimos. Which, Boom. Check out that rhyme. Yes. Which, uh, On the spot. Now that we're talking about the Eskimos, uh, both... Uh, Premier Notley and uh, Prime Minister Trudeau have said, hey, Eskimos, you should probably change your name. To them I say, fuck you! But it looks like they're probably going to do it, unfortunately. I think Notley should change her position from being... Employed to unemployed. No, I was going to go alive, but, I mean, you're just less cynical, so let's go with that one. Mind less put you in jail? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just... Can't arrest me for my thoughts! Actually, in Canada, you can now. Only in Quebec? No, no, you can. There are certain things you can't do. But they don't know what's in my head. Yeah, if you say it on this podcast, they will. Well, I didn't say it because well, you prevented me. Well, that's what tag partners do. <laughs> Look out for you, buddy. Um, but that's so. My question is, which I think we talked about before. Now that it looks like it could actually be a thing, what do they change their name to? If they have to, what do they change their name to? Porch. No, 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 no. Whoa! What? I was going to say porchers. What does that even mean? It was not. It (coughs) means that I wasn't going to go somewhere that you thought I was going to go. Yeah, that's true. Um, There's talk about literally shortening it to the Esks. Trappers. Trappers. What about the Huskies? It sounds like the Eskies. That's their their university name? I thought that was... no. Panda slash the Golden Bears. No, that well, that's university. Edmonton Huskies is like a, no, that's already a thing. In it, it is oh, okay. Let's say because Grant Mack is the Griffins, the Nate is the Ooks, whatever the fuck that is. Ook, 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 ook. Yeah, I don't know what it is either. Then, Sounds like some Lars Sullivan would say, right? Uh, then. Uh, uh, University of Alberta is the Golden Bears and the Pandas for the women, which is weird. They have two different ones, whatever. Um, and then, uh, so what, what, which one is the Huskies? Yeah. What are we talking about? Search King, it up right now. King's University College? Are we talking about It's either Florida? a university or a high school, but it's definitely a... Oh, if it's a high school, then just take it. What's a high school going to do? They'll be happy. Edmonton... Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, I just looked that up. But um, no, if I was gonna, if I was gonna change it, maybe I would just stay away from the whole snow thing. Edmonton Husky Canadian Junior Football Team. Oh, they're actually a junior football team based out of Calgary. It's nothing to do with school. Huh. They're playing in the Prairie Football Conference, Canadian Junior Football. So yeah, you're right. I get. I, I guess they really can't use that. No. That'd, that'd be too much of a conflict of interest. Uh, huh. Well, that's a little bit depressing. What about the uh, Edmonton Somali Pirates? What about the Cracker Cats? If only we could have the Edmonton Cracker Cats. I like the Edmonton Somali Pirates. Oh, but I don't think that'll be offensive whatsoever. Eh. Cotton pickers? 
That is really racist, but it's also a thing in Texas of all places. Yeah. So I'm not that being so I'm not weird. being racist. I'm just that's, taking other that is people's so names. Weird. I'm just taking other people's names. I know, being... but that's just it's weird. It's weird. Um, you know, what actually, they could use Edmonton FC because Edmonton FC team just not became a thing. They gone. Really, we don't have soccer anymore. Yeah, they basically forfeit. They close down. They're like, well, we are in Div Two, and we can't seem to make this thing work. We're trying to get more funding, so. Uh, we're done. We're shutting down. Our city became cool again. I just don't get it. It's like, oh, we're, we're trying to make it work. We're trying to make the tier two thing work. It's too hard. We're not doing it. What? Okay. So I guess, I guess we don't have a team. So they could be the Edmonton FCs. The Edmonton <laughs> Canadians. Or a football club. Just completely steal I, it. I guess. Just completely steal it. I don't I don't see how that would work, but that's just me. Now, I'm trying to remember the one reporter who went around and actually interviewed uh, people of the Eskimo uh, organization. Well, I don't I don't know what the right word is to call them, but they said it was Oh, the indigenous people. Yeah, they they said more like it wasn't offensive to them. They said they actually liked the fact that, you know, they're, they're being represented. And it was actually from when you take it from a history standpoint, the Edmonton Eskimos are actually one of the more prolific organizations in the CFL. They're like the second most winning team. Yeah. So when you look at that aspect, the fact that they got the heritage like they do, it's more out of a respect and it's more out of something, hey, you know what? We can be proud of the fact that, you know, the Edmonton Eskimos are something we can be, you know, prideful for. Yep. So, I think it's sensitive people, not the people you should be asking if it offends them, making it a bigger deal than what it is. And then, of course, it's Justin Trudeau, who's like, you know what? I'm going to do the least most important thing here and worry about this issue, not our economy. Because why would he do that, Justin? Well, he's going to Here's what we're going to do. We're going to change the Eskimos, and we're going to bring a bunch of people from ISIS back into the country and just watch them. Of all things, for you to put your damn nose in an Alberta's way, it's this. Not anything to do with our financial situation, but it's a f- football team's name. Thank you, Trudeau. You're making a difference. Let's switch this up. I don't like talking politics. It's weird. Yeah. Trudeau, let's move on. Yeah. And not only go suck a dick, you whore. You drama baby back bitch. Like seriously, you haven't done anything. <clears throat> anything That's useful at all. That's not true. He gave some... Not only a girl. Okay, he didn't do anything. <laughs> he didn't even know that. Yuri Lettinen <laughs> got his number retired by the stars. Good for him. I didn't realize he was that prolific down there, but I mean, yeah. He's a good player, him. yeah. Yeah, okay. Now I just need Richard Matvichuk. Well, you think someone like Hatcher would be next? Sergey Zuboff? Sergey Zuboff. Mike Badano? Langenbrunner? Langenbrunner? Neuendijk? No, nah, he didn't do shit. Uh, even. Eddie Belfour? I'd say Belfour or Brett Hull. Andy Moog? Andy Moog. Also, John. Marty Turco? Who the hell's that? Yeah, which is one of the guys with the coolest pads ever. He had like the pure gold pads. They're fantastic. Oh, Captain Civilot. Nice. Oh, they're awesome. Uh, John Hayden was also fined twenty five hundred dollars for a high stick versus the Lightning. Who? I didn't even. John Hayden. He's a fourth line center for uh, Chicago. Who cares? Fuck you. Fourth liners don't get love. Well, that's the thing though. Is that I actually watched. I was watching that game. Didn't see it. I have no idea what he... Well, he should have got he, it. He got a high-sticking penalty, yes, but didn't draw blood. Just two minutes. Don't know why he's getting fined. I don't understand this call. Headshot. I guess, but shouldn't every high-stick then, even if it's unintentional? Maybe he rubbed people the wrong way. Maybe, I guess. I don't know. He could also maybe had a previous... Uh, Actually, I think fun. he does. So that could but be... But again, it was one of those trying to lift a stick... Stick rides at the other stick, hits the guy in the face. Like, completely unintentional. But, I mean, yeah, to each their own. Yeah, man. Sensitive area, man. Yeah. It's even happening in sports. Clearly. So. Um, 
You want to do Let's Book before we head home? Yeah, final, final segment. All right. Hawk, come back. Let's book. Sierra, Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta, Shield. Da, 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 what we found out on Raw tonight da, 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 is that da, 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 Ambrose and Rollins will get their tag title rematch next week on Raw. Da, da, da. Wait, I thought they were supposed to have it this week. No, Ambrose wasn't at Raw. Oh, right, because he's off honeymooning. No. He's off porking his wife. Yes. <laughs> He's getting some back bacon, if you know what we mean. <laughs> Canada. Yeah. Oh, Jose, can you see? Oh, Jose, can you? Why would we be American? It's Canada. Because he's American. Yeah, yeah, whatever. He's from Cincinnati. And you know what he can see? It's the most, since, Cincinnati is the most Canadian place mm-hmm. in all of Ohio. And he lives in Vegas. That's badass. Yeah. I would love to live in Vegas after our trip there. Yeah. It would be expensive. Like, not even on the strip, though. Like, away from it. Oh, f- no, not even near the strip. Like, not. Like, by the mountains. Yeah. And the, and the little hill on a mountain. Mm-hmm. Make a trip into, uh, oh. I don't know, some sort of wrestling company there that's run by a Canadian. Mm. Um, so, The Shield. Let's book him. Um... Well, I I look at I look at this kind of two ways because one you can't you can't have Seth Rollins turning turn his back on him again. You just can't. That would pretty much ruin his credibility for life. Well, that and you cannot have him being accepted back. No. Um, what about Roman turning? See, and that's exactly where I would go. I would very if you truly want Roman Reigns to be hated. What's more dastardly? They're having the guy that everybody wants to boo. But then you put the shield back and like, oh, we like the shield, so we like Roman again. Um, but if he was to turn on the shield, now he's getting extra boos. Because not only is he Roman, where, oh, he's the guy you're forcing us to like. We don't want to like him, so we're just going to boo him. Okay, well, then he just flat out screwed the one thing that you do love the most. Now he would that, is... Would that be Renee Young? No. Oh, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> See where I was going there? It was good. It was Johnny Good. Um, Very good. Yeah. Um, but no, if he was the guy... That took away something that you actually enjoyed. And that was the shield. He would actually be more hated than he was when he was just by himself. Absolutely, because there would be a reason. And then you actually have a number one heel. However, I truly believe Dean Ambrose is your best bet to be the heel moving out of that. Because Naturally, organically, Roman Reigns is going to get his reaction regardless of what he does. That's true. Dean Ambrose might actually get a completely different, no pun intended, evolution of a character <laughs> by doing this. Because he's never been on straight, his own. Straight up solo heel. Yeah. So I think it would benefit him the most. Yeah. And actually having the Roman Reigns go off do his own thing and then Seth do the chase on Dean, I had actually be all right. But here's the thing. I would turn Dean Ambrose heel, but then when the draft or the shakeup comes, you take that away so you don't have to rehash the same thing you did years ago. Now, would you do the, the old classic uh, WWE bit where it's like, oh, one got drafted away, and then he just turns and leaves, and that's that? Or would you actually build it where... Looks like they're about to have a confrontation, and then he gets pulled away. And then you can even do a storyline where it's like he's on one show, and then Seth comes over and attacks. And well, the next week he goes back well, and attacks Seth. And- how would I would actually do it was that I'd, I'd have Roman win the heavyweight title at WrestleMania. Okay, he he I, beats Brock. I, I hear the booze already, but continue. he beats Brock for the Universal Title. Okay, right? is he still the uh, Intercontinental Title? No, I'd actually have him drop the Intercontinental Title right before. WrestleMania. To... I would have Brock Lesnar cost Roman Reigns the Intercontinental title to whoever. Maybe it's Samoa Joe. 
That'd be all right. Maybe it's the Miz again. No, he'd be a, he'd be an eight then. That'd be close. Mm. You know what? I'd say do that and then have Miz lose it once more, come back, small, small side story, then Jericho comes back. Fight some part. Okay. We'll get into that later. But we, let's stay on the show. Yep. Next so, week, uh, book, book in the Miz. But then, if Roman Reigns somehow can get out of WrestleMania not being booed, being the Universal Champion, okay. and Dean Ambrose is the guy who turns, what? have Seth Rollins be the guy who gets drafted to SmackDown, okay. and then you can have Dean Ambrose against Roman Reigns for the title. What about if he costs um, <clears throat> Roman the title at Mania? Like, he's about to win again. He keeps getting that chance where he almost wins at Mania versus Brock Lesnar. I guess it's only one time. But then Dean Ambrose shows up and costs him the match. And it starts. And then down the line, he gets a rematch for him and well, wins it then. Well, the one thing I do like about the Shield right now, and if we remember the way that Roman Reigns won the Intercontinental title, where Roman Reigns beat the Miz, you had the Shield beat up on the Entourage, or the Miz Tourage beforehand. But, yeah. Where there was on, uh, Miz TV, and then again during the match where they actually took the numbers game away, and that allowed Roman to win one on one. Well, wasn't it though that they beat up the Miz front earlier in the night, and then the bar came down and they actually came down for the save? Yeah, but but either way, they yeah. came down for a save. But my thing is, why not have the Shield go rampant on Brock Lesnar, and they're the reason they use the numbers to get what they want, and that is the universal title. Would that not turn them all heel technically? No, Brock because Lesnar's pretty loved. Yeah, but the Shield is even more loved. That is true. Um, and actually, having them bump around for Brock for Brock for a little while would also be really cool. A Shield triple power bomb on Brock Lesnar. That'd be pretty. Ten accurate. WrestleMania is a big thing. Mm-hmm. But then, when this is at the greatest point that you can have. That's when you have, say, Dean Ambrose turn on Roman Reigns. Like post match? Like right at WrestleMania? No, maybe like just a little bit after where it's like, okay, kind of what, you know, like what's next? And then all of a sudden the shakeup's coming. Seth goes to SmackDown. And then all of a sudden you see that's when Dean Ambrose takes a shot at Roman Reigns. You know what else would be really funny too? Is if uh, they do this beat up thing, Triple H comes out, they beat him up too. The very next night on Raw, he comes out. Triple H mentions something about Plan B again. Immediately, Roman and Dean turn and look at Seth. Dean just attacks him. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not taking that chance. Then he gets keeps doing it. No, nope. because more rampant. And then he starts attacking um, Roman, but saying it's Seth doing it. But but okay, I got I got one for you though. Here's a scenario though. If we go with the Dean and uh, Roman thing and say Seth goes to SmackDown, perhaps the Usos come to Raw. Now, take this into account. There's a tag team out of NXT who kind of looks like the Shield who are prompt for a call up. What oh, happens yeah. if Ambrose reforms a new age Shield with the Authors of Pain? Authors of Pain and Roderick Strong. No, just Authors of Pain. But Roderick Strong's part of them, though. No. Okay. Uh, so it's Dean Ambrose, Authors of Pain. He takes the title off of Roman, and only for Roman to bring back the Usos to counter. That would actually be pretty good. That would be really good. And actually, I wouldn't even say having like a New Age shield. It's more of two massive heaters. That would be good. And then maybe you even have Paul Eldering there. That would be good. But then now you have Dean Ambrose as a mouthpiece to a new heel faction. That'd be all right. That would be good. I like it. I like it a lot. What about you? Well, I was kind of just chiming in with yours. I don't really have anything. <laughs> My thing would be kind of, you know, have, after, right after Mania, if uh, we have, keep with Roman winning, have uh, Triple H come out and mention a Plan B thing, and then uh, Dean just starts going crazy attacking Seth. Seth keeps trying to convince him it's not happening. And then one show, it's uh, Roman Reigns gets attacked. It's like, oh, it was Seth. Seth did it. It turns out it was Dean Ambrose the whole time. Just he's sick of it. And literally do like an old school Triple H and him shake hands. He receives a giant like package, which we assume is money. I think that'd be hilarious. Very old school. Like, yeah, you know what? I, I want money. I'm greedy. Screw you guys. 
I think that'd be funny. I didn't do this for friendships. I did this for money. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that'd be hilarious. And then have him go if you want to do the, keep it the same where, um, where Seth moves over. Actually, I'd say you have uh, Dean Ambrose move over to SmackDown. And then have maybe him come over every once in a while and attack one of the two and then they go over and try and find them. And... See, I just think if you t- make uh, the change of that, that needs to headline your top show, which is Raw. At least if you put Seth Rollins onto SmackDown, that takes away that possibility. Oh, that's true. And because then whoever attacks, whoever turns on the shield, would then have two guys on them. Yeah. You can't have two baby faces attack one heel. And maybe, actually, you know what? If we do it your way, it actually would work too because when the whole turn happened, Rowan didn't really do anything about it. No, and that's, that's exactly and that's what, what I was you could actually to... use for Dean, saying, you never really helped me. I did all the work defending us, and you never did a damn thing. Huh? I like it. No, let's go with that. Um, and I think there's so much... Like, with them, they have the history where you can almost attack anything on. Um, not to mention... There, even if it's Roman who turns, he can just go full ego. I am the best. I'm the only one to win a WrestleMania main event. I beat The Undertaker. I beat Brock Lesnar. I've won a Royal Rumble. And that's not true about the WrestleMania main event. Seth Rollins. Well, he injected himself. He wasn't. Still won the main event. That's true. At the end of WrestleMania, he held the title. Something no other Shield brother could say. That is true. Up until, you know, Roman Reigns did that with Triple H a couple years later. Was that the last match, though? I think so. Was that not last year? I don't remember. No, because last year was versus Undertaker. That was the last match. Two years ago. Yeah, who did Triple H? Oh, no, it was Seth Rollins last year. Yeah. Um, so Triple H is actually has fought every Shield member of Mania except... The Ambrose. For Ambrose. The Ambrosia Lightship. But, uh... I don't think that was the last match, was it, though? I think Roman Reigns, was, was it? I think so. Because he won at uh, he won at Rumble. So that was the Houston, or the one at uh, Texas Stadium, right? Yeah, because he, he... In Dallas. Yeah, he won at... Uh, he won the Rumble. Yeah. And then won the title because his title was on the line. Well, Triple H won the Rumble yeah, and won the title, saying. yeah. And then he ended up going and he finally got you know, the chance. Yeah. Okay. They tried to make him a super face and it didn't work. It did not... Well, really? Yeah, not at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think your best way is whoever one guy turns on, that third guy has to be drafted away. Um, I just say Seth Rollins just because he's... I do well on SmackDown. Well, and that's the thing. It's definitely a change. SmackDown could be his show, and maybe then you can move, a, say, an AJ Styles or a Nakamura to Monday Night Raw. That'd work. Were um, you Bobby Roode? Bobby. Bobby, 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 Bobby. Bobby. Um, is that it? I don't know. I think Dean Ambrose just makes more sense than Roman. I think Roman is more logical in the sense of how organic it would be, but yeah. I think Dean Ambrose stands to benefit the most long term. Yeah. And then I think uh, whenever they do break up, four years from that point, have them reunite. <laughs> Unless you have Ambrose and Rollins turn on Roman. That'd be interesting. <laughs> That'd be very interesting. I don't know. There's a lot of ways you can go. Yeah. But I think I'd say with Dean turning, because he's the only one who hasn't been a full-fledged heel. On his own. Yeah, whereas well, R- Roman kind of has been by the fans, not, not so not much. Not choice, but yeah. Uh, he's been rejected more than yeah. the other two have by the fans. And if there's anyone who can be a really good reject, it would be Dean Ambrose. Well, I just think, too, like, a lot of his capabilities from a heel standpoint benefits himself moving forward. I mean, Roman Reigns isn't the strong one on the mic. That's maybe Dean Ambrose. That is true. Uh, Seth Rollins is going to probably be the best performer out of the three. Yeah, you could argue that. Roman Reigns is just maybe the better... Better looking one. Better big man. He is all pretty. Roman Reigns is just... The choice of the office. It's because he was an avid Eskimo. But he hasn't been on the cover of uh, WWE 2K anything. 
Neither is Ambrose. No, just Rollins. He burns shit. He's a pyro. Be like no one. So, don't exist. Or be like you. I don't know. I don't know what Whoa! that tagline is. Okay. You be you. I be you, me. You do you. You do you, man. You do you. Um. So, uh, that, yeah, where, where, where can we find it? By the way. Yeah. Are we allowed to talk about what happened this past weekend? Is that something that we can This talk about? past weekend at CWC? Yeah. Um. Because I am absolutely furious. Legally. No. Okay. Uh. That's why I we have, or I have, been informed by uh, my uh, Lincoln lawyer um, to. Uh, Lincoln lawyer? <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to let you use the lawyer that I used to buy my house. By the way, special news I'm a homeowner! Yes, we know. Yeah! Yeah! But, anyways, back to you because I'm pissed. <laughs> and you're also upset. Um. I do. Yeah, I've been told legally to keep my mouth shut. Yeah, don't exacerbate things. That makes don't, sense. Don't expect for one second. I like to talk, alright, people? So this is hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. But at the very next CWC show, which I believe is sometime in January of 2018, yeah. I will reveal all. Yeah. All I can say is... So stay tuned. As as a guy who used to play a doctor on a YouTube show, this infuriates me. That's all I'm going to say about that. Well, that means everything. Yes, exactly. Um, so, where can we find you coming up, though? Well, this Saturday we got a big ma- we got a big show. It's Creed big- Three. Well, well, it's Blitz Creed. Monster Pro Wrestling Blitz Creed Three at the Albert Ave Community Hall. Tickets, that's fifteen dollars at the door. Twenty. So we hit us up for your tickets. Uh, whether it's Blitz Creed, whether it's uh, myself, Chris Parrish, Mister Maniac over here, or the headline Sean Martin's hit big us. Show nasty. Yeah, hit one of us up. For your tickets to Blitzkrieg 3, we will provide you with the tickets you need so you can then come to our show and get the t-shirt that you deserve. Not the t-shirt that you want. The t-shirt you deserve. Yeah, you deserve. Yes, you deserve to treat yourself by getting our apparel. Exactly. Because we want to make you look good. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, do you want to do a podcast at, at the show and get Big Show Nasty in? It's been a while. I well, that. I mean... I miss that maniacal motherfucker. The next episode is officially our one-year year! mark. We've been around a year! <laughs> so, uh... So it'll be our last one. Yeah, and uh, big news next. When this podcast drops on Thursday, listen for Mike the Ref as he will drop a big announcement. And, uh... Yeah, so uh, make sure you listen to that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that would be it, um, pretty much. I'm going to be in a gauntlet match and kick some ass and get a heavyweight title. There you go. Yeah. For the second time. If it's not me, it'll be Big Show Nasty. Exactly. You got to team up. You're the only tag team in this match. Yeah. And uh, Oh, we're going to do it. No. We're going to do it. Big Willy style. Now, um, same rules applies as last year where we both were in it. If you guys start the match, you guys just sit down. And wait. Yeah. Maybe I'll just come running out. We can do a podcast right at the beginning of the match. That would be fantastic. Right. Um, and then we'll wait till. I'm All I can tell you, though, the one thing I'm guaranteeing, I'm feeling squirrely. I'm feeling real squirrely come this show. And I think I gotta jump. You, you know what? The last time you said that to me, uh, you were in my bathroom for like 45 minutes and it was a little weird. Yeah. And I tried to jump out the window that wasn't there and knock myself the goddamn hell out. Yeah, I don't even have a window in that bathroom. I know, that's why it was weird. It was... So, but yes. My mirror broke though. <laughs> you did it ever. Uh. <laughs> Welcome three days, ago. three days later in the hospital. It was awesome. Yeah. Anyways, that's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling squirrely. Well, then, everyone in the Blitzkrieg 3 match, I fear very much a lot for. Um, you know what? Even I... Sean Martins. You know what? Just just be careful, because, you know, you just don't know where this will blow. Exactly. I will say this. he It'll be him and I. It's not a threat. Last... It's just, you know, like, I want my brother to it, be safe. It'll be him and I to the last two, and then we'll have to. 
I don't know, like thumb wrestle for it or something, I guess. Go, uh, just go uh, Hunger Games style and then just get the tie so you both win. Co-champions, that'd be sweet. Right. Free Bird, the heavyweight title. Let's do this. Yeah. Depending on how I'm feeling, if he takes a royal beating, maybe I'll, uh, I don't want to lie down, though. Fuck. I want the title back. This, you know what? Stay tuned. Show up on Saturday. Sportsmanship. If you guys don't want to All aboard walk, the sportsmanship. If you guys want to walk out with the heavyweight title unity style, then, uh, you know, let's just settle it like men and best, best struggle three men win. Okay, but I'm a biter. Well, don't tell me. I know this. That is very true. Uh, just remember, Big Show. I've you. said a lot of things to you. Bite me and not one of them. Yeah. Remember, Sean Martins, I love you. But if it comes down to the two of us, I'm a biter. That's all I got to say about that. So, show on Saturday. That's what we got. And then, Christmas! Yeah, and then five days after Christmas, I got a last man standing match with the Irishman in P- Pure Power Wrestling. I wasn't invited. I'm not available anyways, but <laughs> still, I wasn't invited. That would be nice to be invited. You want to come? You can be my plus one. I can't. I'm busy. You're my plus only. Thanks, babe. You're the yeah. best. So there you go. You're the best. I'm the breast. You're the, you are the breast. You are better than the best because you're a breast. I'm like chicken, but delicious. With a nipple. Well, actually, chicken is delicious. That was a bad thing to say. With a nipple. Well, I think chickens have nipples. Then you're a chicken nipple. Mm, nipple chicken. Yeah. Nipple. By the way, congrats on you for winning a, another jersey. At, yeah. Uh, our favorite award-winning watering hole. Fishing hole? Fishing hole. It's like our closet. Yeah. We never come out the same. No. Um, it's like the crossbar. But Always digging it. Mm. Bar down ski. It's their last stand. Exactly. Anybody who gets this conversation, yay. I don't think anybody will get this conversation. No, but yay. <laughs> but yeah. So um, I think this does it for episode 51. Yeah. Yeah! The yeah. The yeah episode. The Area 51 yeah. Area 50 yeah exactly. episode. Yeah. Um, so I'm Chris Barish. I'm Yamanayak. Manaya. Manaya. Manayak. Manayak. You're a big fan of the black yaks. I am a big fan of the black yaks. Yeah. So uh, this is episode 51. It's in the book. Check out all of our other past episodes on Podbeam. Fuck YouTube, Google Play, and iTunes. No, we don't. We don't fuck iTunes or Google Play. But YouTube, fuck that place. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh, yeah, go back and check out all of our previous five zero episodes as well as this one next week, one year, where we will tell you where we want to expand every major sport league that we like. And we're going to book the Miz. Book the Miz, eh? Book the Miz. Fantasy booking to the moon. Ooh. Not true yet. Also, I'm thinking, uh, because it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, the one year mark. We do, uh, what we were planning on doing probably 20 episodes ago and finally say who we're going to have in the sports, char- sports movie character hall of fame. Maybe we'll finally get to that. Maybe. I thought we did do that. No, we never did. We kept pushing it off and it just stopped. Interesting. Yes. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do it. We, we got a lot to do. It might even be just a thing that we keep talking about but never do. Yeah, make them guess. Maybe right. we'll do it at the 10 year mark. Or just episode 100? <laughs> That's next year. That's like 10-0. That's next year. Yeah. That's next year. That's year two. Year two. By the way, I'm going to talk to you after we get off this. Okay. Well, we're getting off this. Uh, episode 51 of Because we're Tech Struggle 3. And we are real. And we are... Spectacular. Yeah! Later, yeah, bitches. You're running out of breath. If you're ready to rock, we'll just let it.